uh, which exists between humans and animals. That is, make amounts, am amounts uh, for the violence humans constantly exert on animals. And what I have in sight here is uh, Jack Derrida's a very important book on this question of the relation between humanity and animality, a book which is called in English The Animal That Therefore Are the Animal Okay, so now I would like to present some differences from things which are uh, related to this issue and which show how this other dimension of animalization, of self-animalization, uh, can be developed or presented in a positive aspect or as a positive uh, dynamic. So we see first clips from the Burmese heart, uh, then I will continue with the grave, not from the grave of the fireflies and its opposite. Uh, neo-nationalist Japanese film which is called Kamikaze. Then we will see uh, a clip from a Kung Fu film, Bruce Lee, Piece of Fury, and finally uh, a bigger clip from a uh, very beautiful film by Sokuro. You already saw some clips uh, from it uh, that is the sun. So I begin with the Burmese heart. I present uh, the clip which we will see. So to sum up uh, briefly the film, you will maybe remember since we already saw uh, one, or so, I don't know, I think one clip from this film. It's about a Japanese unit, the uh, Tung in Burma. 1943, at the time that the Japanese army is completely rooted uh, on the ground. So the soldiers from this unit sing, you remember, uh, they sing to keep their spirit up. And one of them, Mizushima, has learned how to use this uh, local instrument, which is a harp or a lute and he accompanies them as um, with it uh, as they sing in a choir or chorus. So you remember the scene of fraternization with the British soldiers had in the village as all of them from both armies sing together. So at the end of the war, the Japanese soldiers who have surrendered await repatriation in a prisoner's camp. Mizushima is sent on a special mission. He's sent by the British to try and convince a Japanese company, which um, is a French in a mountain, uh, and he doesn't want to give up. So he's trying to, he has to try to convince them to give up surrender. But he fails. They do not want. They go on fighting. So the British attack. Many Japanese soldiers are killed. Uh, and Mizushima's uh, comrades uh, think that he has died. Uh, however, he has survived. He has disguised himself as a Buddhist priest. He walks to the barren Burmese landscape, trying to join his comrades, his fellow comrades, soldiers in the camp. And on his way, he bumps into many bodies of dead Japanese soldiers who are just like there. They have not been buried, they have not been burned. And then he goes to live a life of prayer as a Buddhist monk, so burying bones and bodies of his dead uh, comrades. 
once in one of the scenes, uh, he crosses the way of his comrades, the prisoners, on the bridge, but he pretends not to know them. He just carries on his way. He doesn't want them to recognize him. But from different sides, they have understood that he's still alive, and they try hard to convince him to return to Japan with them. So now, the scene we will see at the end is at the end, it comes at the end of the film, just before the soldiers uh, depart from the camp um, and the ship to Japan, sent back to Japan on the ship. He comes to make his farewells, but without saying anything, without speaking, without acknowledging that he is actually Mizushi. For, in fact, he is not anymore Mizushima. He really has become another himself. That is, he really has become a mute with his priest who takes care of the body and soul of the dead Japanese soldiers. And as you will see in the scene, he has two parrots on each of his shoulders. And these birds are not only used by him as some kind of a sign, uh, signal, recognition signal, because these birds are of, uh, of so his comrades are familiar with these birds. These birds have an history in the film. The prisoners, the soldiers, have told to these birds uh, how to talk. And then they have to sell it to, to an old woman who is a local peddler who comes to the camp. And they make the bargain with her and exchange and so on. So they have to give her the parrots and after that she gave the parrots to the monk. So, okay, the, the parrots on his shoulders point out his Mizushima's transformation, becoming other, or let's say here, becoming animal. They are not a symbol. This point is important. It's not an issue about symbols, animal symbols, uh, which is, let's say, a very common uh, topic, and it's a symbol of this or that. But it is not the case here. They are not a symbol of anything. They just mark off the process of Mizushima's transformation from the soldier of the Imperial Army, of the Japanese Army, into a monk, that is, into a very humble figure. So they go with, they accompany his conversation, in conver his conversion, sorry, uh, to this humble life in Burma. Uh, they go with his renouncement to his monk of his previous identity as a member of not only the Japanese army, but the Japanese community uh, as well. So they are an integral part of his new condition, I would say condition rather than identity. Yeah. And uh, of course the fragility of these two birds, this is something which is uh, aimed at pointing out his own new humbleness. So they go with him, they go with him on his new life, on his new path, that is the new goal he has assigned to his life, devotion to his fallen comrades, uh, salvation in the next world, because as you know the problem, the main problem is that if this um, Dead soldiers are not buried themselves, but will never be in peace. Okay, so let's see this scene. So it's yeah. We'll see. Okay. Any 
speak on that? On this beautiful scene? Very often, the image of the lost child is very often 
associated with animals, with, with animal condition, the animal being the humble, being the victim, etc. And in uh, this film, in Grave of Fireflies, we come across the same topos, let's say, same issue. Uh, so my question would be, uh, and it's really an open question, uh, is this issue, the lost child, at this place, is it just an effect of contamination of an Eastern, Eastern film by Western standards or Western issues? Uh, and this within the realm of movie making, where this contamination effects are so frequent, so frequent. Um, or uh, has such uh, narration uh, real deep roots in local culture, uh, that is in general in Eastern Asia uh, and in particular in Japan. Yeah. So I don't know, know the answer. This is the question I'm just asking. In particular, is this topic, lost child of Montpellier, an abundant source for narratives in Chinese culture? Question. So, um, uh, as of course, we can add, I can add that Grave of the Fireflies was uh, a global hit success. Um, and this everywhere, but here, not only in Japan. So should we give the credit for this success first of all to the quality, the aesthetic quality of the film, the form, quality of the design, quality of the animation, which is great, or maybe uh, should we give this credit to this figure, that is the lost child, this image of the lost child, uh, as this figure always sets in motion something in the depth of the, uh, let's say, audience uh, feeling and emotion. Uh, can ask ourselves if this image that is being becoming a lost child, is it not for each of us related to all kinds of archive fears? So if we accept this hypothesis, the fireflies appear to be the radiant constellation which relieves the children from this archive scare or fear and they open up a new horizon and this horizon is that of their freedom for after all the other side of being a lost child uh, it's of course uh, some kind of new freedom uh, because lost children also can be seen or taken into consideration as having been emancipated by here by the circumstances of war from all kinds of constraints like family life, school, discipline and all this. To remember, we saw some clips from Barefoot again and you remember how in Berfu again the orphan, the orphans from um, uh, Hiroshima, they have set up some kind of a wild but very cheerful community and they invent, they invent a free way of life in the very ruins of Hiroshima. Okay, let's see this. Uh, 
with from Ray or not. Okay, now just a few words, oh, it's okay, um, on uh, okay, the opposites. Uh, that is this thing which is called Kamikaze, which is a standard Japanese neo-nationalist film. Uh, I don't remember, it was shot in uh, 2007. Um, and you, you will see how the, this Fireflies issue is uh, hijacked uh, uh, by the, the revisionist narrative, whose main goal is to back up the religion according to which the kamikaze sacrificed their young life for the good of the Japanese community and this in a desperate and heroic effort to protect the lives of their countrymen and women. And the fireflies are in this so-called patriotic version the visible form of the south of these heroes who are worshipped at the Yasukuni shrine, that is the sanctuary uh, of Japanese uh, neo-nationalism in Japan today. And by using this image, the way you would see uh, in the clip, which is the last film where the focus is on the message, this film unveils, of course, itself as what uh, it is. Uh, fact that is some kind of an advertisement promoting uh, future uh, roaring uh, adventures. Okay, let's see. Okay, so just remember that this, this kind of cult of the young dead heroes uh, soldiers, this form of the cult has much in common with fascism. But I mean fascist regimes. Even if the context of course here yeah, is different, but still the uh, way of staging the death and uh, this kind of aestheticization of the death of the young heroes which is an aesthetization of the war, of course. This is something which is very familiar in the fascist propaganda. So, hmm? I mean, yeah, let's see something which is a bit more cheerful. Uh, in, so, Fist of Fury. <laughs> Snoring at Bruce Lee as Chen Zhen in the role of the writer of wrongs, who is taking revenge for all the humiliations which have been inflicted on the Chinese people by foreign invaders, and this from West and East, Western Europe and Japanese. This is as you know, a uh, classical kung fu film. So Shenzhen, the hero, having to fight alone against all the others, can only win by becoming some sort of a wild animal. That is, by being uh, set in motion uh, by this specific affect which is pure and as you will see he becomes properly speaking a furious tiger he moves like a tiger he snarls like a tiger snarls like a tiger the beauty of his performance derives from the combination of this pure affect that is pure at the affect that metamorphosis 
the submissive colonized into an invincible avenger combination of this affect with the perfection of the, the technique, technical gesture. You see, as par excellence, the Kung Fu master. And this, this is important in this film at the time as uh, uh, these performances were real. I mean, no special, no special effects like today. Uh, one last time, flying daggers, uh, etc. Um, so Chen Zhen does not, once again, he does not imitate uh, wild animal hero in order to impress or to frighten his open. It's rather that he goes to the end of his becoming animal, becoming wild, exactly, I would say, as uh, the colonized in uh, Hans Fanon texts, uh, them of the earth, do as they just take arms and kill the colonizer without any calculation or anything, but just well, up like this. So, okay, let's see this scene. But all the, the, the fight scenes in this film, uh, and this, uh, of all kinds of opponents, they all are built on the same model of that.
Japanese public and maybe also uh, outside Japan, how uh, strong uh, uh, his uh, scientific capacities uh, are. Okay, so you will see the, the talent of Sokolov in this uh, sequence uh, is to progressively transform the underground where this god, man, man god, very lonely, lives, transform it into some sort of liquid milieu, greenish, murky, cloudy. Sometimes the aquarium transforms itself into a submarine with noisy iron gangways, heavy metallic doors, and all this. For the arts or the, the actor, or the art of the actor who plays the part of the emperor completes uh, the transformation uh, of the lapin into a fish. He steadies uh, with the, the, the steady gaze a bit distraught, the strange uh, constant motion of the mouth like that of a fish which is moving it, it, its uh, guilt. The solitude of this strange and confused animal is so complete that the American planes which drop, which drop their bombs over the city become in his um, hallucinated vision of the bombing of the apocalypse. They just become <coughs> planes, just become uh, like sharks, monsters, <coughs> big fishes, radio for blood and destruction. And at in this scene, from this scene, we understand how this poor only imperial goldfish is just ready for beginning a new career, a new life in uh, General MacArthur's luxury aquarium. Okay, let's see that. <laughs> 